Sweden, Russia, US of A. Today we're going to be talking about the KJB versus the CIA. The KGB. Okay, so as you can see, the KGB is no longer active. Now, keep note of that. But there's still undercover Russian operatives going down to this day. They're not called the KJB, but they exist. Versus the CIA. Oh, CIA still going strong. Oh, they got to give us an inch. We're taller in America. As you know, today we're in a bit of a hot war, right? We have some serious issues going on in the Ukraine. My heart is with the Ukrainian civilians because although I may not agree with the Ukrainian government and NATO and the fact that America has bio labs in America, they're going to deny that for a while, but the truth will come out. It's horrible what Putin has done to innocent people. Now, keep in mind, there's genocides and wars going on all over the world, like Yemen, for instance. Now, if you vote for the KGB, doesn't mean that I think, oh my God, this person's a Russian apologist. This is strict for the episode. Fighting for the KGB. Stars Clarkson. I'm not f***ing with this guy. My man's got five S's in his name. Brain melt. Brain melt. I saw four because they were next to each other, but then I realized the first letter is also an S and it's five, and I don't want anything to do with Stars Clarkson. That escalated quickly. Despite the KGB's deadly reputation, Team CIA shows no fear. Representing the agency, former CIA officer, Mike oh, Baker. Mike Baker. You may have seen him on the Joe Rogan podcast a few times. Incredibly eloquent, fast mind, very funny guy, very likable. Shout out to Mike Baker, man. Also weighing in for the CIA. Tony Soprano. Gabagool. Gabagool. Soviet spies successfully stole details of the bomb's construction. With two nuclear armed superpowers threatening the other's survival, a shadow war was launched between their most secretive branches. The Soviets acquiring the atomic weapon was a significant wake-up call and it just only increased the, the sense of urgency for preventing the spread of communism around the globe. Yeah. Founded by President Harry Truman in 1947, the CIA's sole mission was to counteract Soviet activity that Washington feared could trigger a nuclear showdown. How crazy is it that right now, sitting where we sit, there's multiple superpowers around the world that have nuclear weapons. And right now, where we sit, you're watching this video, we could be on the precipice of potential nuclear sort of annihilation of the whole world. We're really on the, on the brink of something really, really scary. And I hope that things turn out well for everyone's sake. Inside the Soviet states, they aggressively oh, suppressed dissent. Oh, oh, damn. Poking holes in them. KGB was everywhere. Hong Kong, Beijing, Los Angeles, Atlanta, Washington DC, everywhere. At one point, half of the staff of the Soviet embassy in Washington DC were KGB agents. They infiltrated physically yeah. through the use of espionage and things of that nature. And right now we have cyber wars occurring and that are about to even escalate further. We have propaganda on both sides in 2022. The propaganda that we're experiencing today is on a level never seen before. When the KGB set their sights on weaker countries, a hostile takeover was imminent. One of their most audacious actions occurred in Afghanistan in 1979. KGB special forces infiltrated Kabul, executed the president. Though we're Middle Eastern, we were really Russian. <laughs> and took control of the CIA are badasses in three-piece suit and a college education. That's corny, bro. No one's intimidated by that. When the Cold War era CIA needed fierce firepower, they turned to a portable pulverizer, the MAC-10 submachine gun. Man, the MAC-10 is a dope-looking machine, isn't it? MAC-10, built early 60s, it quickly became co-opted by criminal organizations and narco traffickers. Uh, you can see up here, not a lot up front. Very easy to get your hand around the front here when you're on full auto. A lot of guys walking around Latin America right now with no thumb. <laughs> it's uh, 45 round, a lot of stopping power. So what dope. does the CIA need this firepower for? We've got a situation where we've got to extract somebody. We've got to have the type of firepower if necessary. This is the weapon of choice. KGB has a submachine gun that's just as deadly. The Scorpion. Wow. A sleek How weight. cool is that thing, man? Very nice, sleek design. Sexy design, I would call it. And the precision of this gun is the best. That might be the first time I've ever heard the words precision and KGB in the same sentence. <laughs> Both machine guns can be outfitted with suppressors for undercover agency operations. But which gun can more quickly and more precisely take out multiple targets? And uh, let's let these guys have a last miserable drink of their terrible, terrible lives. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> I will gladly kill you. Roll out! Damn, brutal. Oh! 
right in the forehead. Team KGB takes 12 seconds to shoot. And how much damage did they leave in Dude. their wake? Okay, so let's break it down here. You've got a dead center chest shot. This guy's gonna be down. It's going straight to the heart. This is a kill. You've got a shot through the neck and one in the face. This is going to the brain. This is a kill. Yikes. This is an interesting shot, actually. You're going above the heart. You're gonna miss the heart here. You're gonna puncture a lung. This guy's actually gonna still be alive. He's still gonna have time to get his gun and shoot back. This one's obvious. You don't get shot, you don't get killed. Let's look at the guy in the back. This guy's riddled across the belly. This is an instant kill right here. So what do we Brutal, have? Huh? Three kills, one wounded, and one walking away yeah. unscathed. Now Team CIA is determined to Thank you. Let's go, CIA. With the Mac We're 10. American, USA. Yeah. Beer, McDonald's, diabetes. Hammer down. Hammer down, boy. CIA, you got to get that motherfucker at the corner of the table. He got by. Oh! 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 Oh, they, he hit them all. They're done, they're done, buddy. Ah, look at Tony Soprano backpedaling. Okay, let's go take a look. Star Spangle, my banner. These boys pulled it off. I hate one-liners like that. Even though this channel is majority, there's one-liners. Me reacting to stuff and one-liners. Yo, look at his head. He blew his whole left ear off. Ridiculous. What? You're almost eight seconds slower. Well, let's see if that difference is actually important. I noticed that. Head, chest, all the way through. These are definite kills. Here, again, you got head, chest. This is a kill. Again, you got head, chest. Am I uh, being redundant here? But nice look way. at that. No head, but look at this. <laughs> Two dead through the chest. This is a kill. I think the blood explains what happened to the guy in the back. Five the kills, guy in the back can't no catch point. a break, man. So which submachine gun will take the edge? The CIA's Mac-10 or the KGB's Scorpion? I'm going to give the advantage to the Mac-10. Larger caliber, faster rate of fire, and for me, it was more deadly on accuracy. The long range weapons, the edge goes to the CIA for the Mac 10. Sun. All right, America, we got one in the bank with the Mac 10, baby. KGB is not easily taken out from the fight. They receive hardcore training from Russian Spetsnaz special forces, including Sistema. Sistema? Is that correct? Mikhail Ryapko, by any chance? Instant win for CIA. If you believe Sistema is truly effective, then you have no place in the Strangle Gang. This helped them develop tolerance to incredible brutality. Actually, what it helped you do is make your body more loose, number one, and then also to deal with stiffness. You remember that one? You're giving me your stiffness. You were trained to ignore pain. You were trained to survive in any situation and you were trained to think with only one look at this doof ball he's throwing multiple kicks on the same leg with his lead arm way too low his left elbows flaring out one of the cold war's most chilling moments came in 1962 when the cia discovered soviet nuclear warheads being installed in cuba the missile crisis made cuban dictator fidel castro a prime target he had 55 attacks on his life I actually have a family member who's from Cuba who has passed away, but he was actually one of the guys up in the mountains, like, trying to kill Castro. So it's crazy how that dude lived so long despite being equally hated by everyone. Some weaknesses can be a simple habit. Yo, oh no, oh no. So you even see the teeth up in the gum area. That's brutal. The exploding cigar. Former CIA operative Mike Baker positions a cigar rigged with a pea-sized piece of C4 and a thermal igniter. You better run. It's set for a four-minute smoke. Yo, look at the swag that they walked away with. Look at the damage it's done. It's That's enough dark. to tear open your face and the bones within it. This guy's dead. If there's even another person in the room, he's untouched. You use just what you need. But you have to admit that the odds of getting all these circumstances together are very low. 
I mean, he could have left this cigar over there. He could have got a call and just went out. KGB guy, thinking ahead. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Oh, I like that. He had a rebuttal. This concept has worked in the past. I can show you a weapon that will blow not only your head off, but your balls with hole inside. Cold War era agents use small containers to secretly pass information to their handlers, including that dead drop spike. Never heard of this before. The dead drop spike is six inches and two ounces with a metal casing and Semtex explosive. To protect their private papers from prying eyes, the KGB developed a deadly modification. Okay, but how would your team know how to open this? It could be as simple as clockwise versus counterclockwise. Okay, so righty tighty, lefty kablooey. It's an sure. insurance policy with an edge. I want to see this in action. Fire! Yo, it's black smoke. Man, I'm going with the KGB on this one. In explosive weapons, the edge goes to the KGB for that dead drop spike. These agencies gathered intel in very different ways. KGB will find out the information firsthand. If that means interrogation, they will interrogate. If that means elimination, they will eliminate. See I love it. it. It's so impersonal. We have no problem with killing you. Absolutely none. So just, you know that now? Cool. The CIA had a no-nonsense method to pack a deadly surprise. The briefcase gun. Doing business with a bang. I mean, that's old school. I love it. You've got a ring right here attached to a wire, which runs around a roller attached to a pulley on the trigger. And it's very simple. You pull it up, and off goes your shot. That's so cool, man. I'm just going to Home Depot. Do you got the tiles or, or no? Oh, you don't have those tiles. Boom, dead. Dies. I need four two by fours. You don't have them? Boom, dead. Move. I'm in and out. I'm killing people with the briefcase. Don't hit the kid, Two, Kevin Baker. One. I would have to get real close to be confident. Wow, right in the liver. First shot was right here. Okay, this one's in the arm, and if we lift that arm up, yeah. boom, right drop the, the left lung, coming yeah. out the back side here. Great shot. That's a great shot. Not potentially a kill, but let's take a look at the second shot. Center of mass, this is where the liver's sitting, and Called you it. pour right through it outside this side here. Dead. In combination, I would say He's dead. this is a kill. But were any pedestrians shot in the crossfire? Nothing. Feeling nothing. This silhouette target completely clean. So This guy's good. This guy's good. Good, good think, job by Baker. First of all, uh, it's not clear he's dead. <laughs> five S's. Stas Klaus is back, my dude. Five S's. The KGB also had covert weaponry that could pull off a public assassination. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. See, that's straight, that's straight, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. You couldn't pull that off now. Who the hell is using those kinds of cameras, right? The camera gun is dope, though. But if you can somehow attach that to your iPhone, and I'm just getting a vertical. I'm trying to post a TikTok. Bang, you dead, boy. This is a 1950s made uh, Czechoslovakian uh, 8 millimeter camera. It's uh, fully functional. You can shoot film with it. Uh, you put the film in here, it comes up rather nice, actually. However, upon further inspection, it has an actual 22 millimeter pistol inside the lens. This is the actual barrel of the weapon. Wow. That's so it's a sneaky weapon. That's, that's really the place cool. where we would actually chamber the round and put it in there. So the whole assembly of the weapon is within the lens. This is the trigger, and, and inside you have the firing pin. So the whole assembly of the weapon is within these two inches. Wow. We have a cyanide capsule with them. If there was any chance of an agent being discovered after the mission is complete, he would take the cyanide capsule before he would be captured and interrogated. So why don't you go ahead, line it up, and show us why freedom of the press wasn't so big in the Eastern Bloc. All right, Pablo, are you ready? Ready. All right, you can imagine Biden's doing a speech, and he's like, we're going to be flying support over to Ukraine. We're going to expand NATO. And then Putin's like, not so fast. All right. Lights, camera, action! Oh. Hmm. Okay, when we were saying surgical precision, we really meant it. This is exactly the way we would want to get to a brain. This is the procedure we use. There's a plate called here, the crib reform plate. That's how you remove a pituitary tumor, and he did it with a bullet. 
but the true kill is from the bullet that's hitting to the bottom portion of the brain. That's an instant kill. When you put a real firearm inside a briefcase with multiple rounds in it, I gotta give it to the briefcase gun. For mid-range weapons, the edge goes to the CIA for the briefcase gun. The shoe knives. I couldn't think of a better name. What do you do, you put a shoe in a knife? We'll call it a shoe knife. Stas Klassen. I'm about to get foot loose right now, Stas Klassen, foot loose. Oh, Stas Klassen getting foot loose, Stas Klassen. Stas Klassen, just kicking the blood out of that thing. Stas, nice work, man. So your kick force off this that I measured with the accelerometer is about 605 pounds. And that shoe knife turns you into something deadly. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about death here. Now, the locations where he kicks, you're going to get some arteries, some veins that are going to bleed. So this can definitely kill. It's bloody. It's brutal. Uh, right down the KGB line. Because of this concealed weapons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not deadly giving one. in. Who knows what happened to the target? Well, you just follow the bloody footprints, and that'll help out, I think. The CIA preferred a quieter method to silence a target. The garrote. I love the garrote. Actually, there's a jiu-jitsu move that we use when you get to someone's back. It's a rear strangle with one arm, and we call it the single arm garrote. I'm gonna tell you right now, there's no way that the foot knife or <laughs> the shoe knife can beat the garrote. The object here would be to sever or cut the carotid artery, or perhaps even the trachea. Very, very quick, very, very clean, very, very powerful. Or if you wanted to use a cloth garrote, something that you could do like this, a scarf, very discreet. This one would be a blood choke. They choke at the carotid artery. Within about six to nine seconds, they're out. Wow. Choke them out! Yo, he took my man's head off. Tony Soprano took the head off. Forget about it. As the head is just about to flop off, that heart is still pumping. And though he's unconscious, that heart is spurting this blood. Yeah. They're hitting the floor, dead. Yep. No rocket science involved in, in the garage. This is a very lethal, very stealthy, very quiet weapon. You have to devise the whole thing to get behind the target. Shoe knife. I'm free. Feet on behind, from the side, from the front. I think we can all agree that this was very impressive. Now the KGB is like, I will not agree with anything you say, you're an American propagandist. If you lose the element of surprise, you're done with that weapon. For me, the differing variable is the fact that with the garrot, you can't come head on. But with the shoe knife, you can come both from front and from the back. Edge and shoe knife. Wow, the they're giving weapons. the edge to the shoe knife, which I'm going to disagree with. I mean, it requires you be like even a decent kicker to be effective with it. I don't agree. I like the shoe knife, though. The shoe knife was dope. No matter who wins, I definitely don't like the KGB. But something you should like is this video. Oh, the segue. Leave a like. It helps the channel. Oh, got him. That's one KGB guy. Oh, the mouth exploded. KGB's out, one CIA, one for CIA. Simple. Have a smoke, done. Uh-oh, no, no, no. Oh, wait, that's a KGB on KGB. That's not gonna happen. CIA, uh-oh. Oh, come on. Got him. Damn, man. Agent 004 is in the building. Agent 005 is in the building. Bah, he hit it, he went, oh, you got away. Oh, they're taking this to the streets right now. KGB 005. Ah, we're on to you, pal. gonna have a woman kill a woman, I can sense it. Ah, they're hiding behind the canisters. This is great. Yo, spin. Yo, the Russian lady cannot be beat. There we go. There we go. We got her out of there. That Russian lady was tough to beat. Not for nothing. She was very durable. Very smart. All right, so 
We got two on two now. The CIA versus the KGB. I think we're closing in on a W, America. Let's go. American football. Course light. Oh. Throws him into a urinal. Oh, foot knife. Be careful for the shoe knife. Nah, I like how he showed it. He kicked you in the stomach, then he goes, look at my foot. Get shoe knife, you mother... Can't beat a gun now, right? But you're going out anyway. Give me, give me the canister. Oh, it's gonna explode. Got him, got him, got him. Whoops. You gotta go clockwise, CIA. All right, one-on-one, -on -one, baby. The moment we've all been waiting for. This is it, the final showdown. The garage, the garage, the garage. Let's go. Done. The CIA wins. The CIA won 550 to the KGB's 450. This was due in large part to the reliability of the CIA's firearms. I thought the KGB were going to carry this battle originally because of their brutality, but I'm proud to have been proved wrong. This is a computer generalized result. Now this video is in no way a political standing. It's just a fun video. It takes place in the Cold War era, for God's sakes. I think there's a lot of a lot of details regarding what's currently going on in the world that we don't know about. We only know what these giant media conglomerates are telling us. All I know is that my heart is with the Ukrainian civilians who are being unjustly brutalized. Other than that, I do not know what's going on in terms of the government, what the implications are, what the behind the scenes setup things are going on. My peace and my heart are with the innocent civilians. And that goes for any country of people that are being suppressed. That's the Stephen Strangle's way. And I hope you guys can relate to that. Appreciate the Strangle Gang as always. And I will see you guys in the next one.